I'm not going to lie, I'm not a big NBA guy, but the NBA playoffs are going on. Um, is there any surprises to you so far uh, throughout the playoffs and, you know, some things that you're kind of, you know, shocked about or anything like that? Yeah, I'm 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 not that big of an NBA fan. I, I usually get all my info from from my uh, most of my guys, but yes, I'm a little shocked. Well, I, I guess I'm not shocked because I'm sh- the Clippers, right? They decided to do what they needed to do to avoid some of the top guys. They fell down because they basically wanted to play Dallas, and now they're down two nothing. Uh, that one kind of surprised me, and. Uh, the New York Knicks. I thought they would. I thought they would be uh, handling the Hawks a little bit better. Yeah, the Clippers to me are definitely the biggest surprise um, so far. I mean, being down two to nothing, you know, having one of the better uh, duos in the NBA. Uh, you know, really appreciate you know Mike joining and Seven. Really appreciate you know supporting the channel and everything. But you know, the Clippers. I mean, that is definitely the biggest surprise. You know, they are. Easily the biggest letdown this past season in the NBA this year and, you know, last season as well. And you mentioned the Knicks. I mean, they lost game one to the Hawks on a tremendous shot by Trey Young. Then, you know, game two, the Knicks ended up winning. And if you would have thought the Knicks winning one game in the playoffs, not a series, not an NBA championship, one single freaking game, I mean, it looked like New York was about to be, like, rioted or something everybody was in the streets it was i mean i'm all for you know sports fandom but that's kind of i mean really stupid i mean you've not won a playoff game since 2013 um you know that was the year you know they beat the celtics Uh, my favorite team is the celtics i I like the Cavs a little bit too i I remember you know that was the last playoff series that you know pierce and garnett was with the celtics and i was all upset about that but i mean it's been eight years since you won a playoff game. I understand, you know, being really happy, but I'm a Bengal fan. Like, I've never experienced a playoff <laughs> in my life. I'm 20 years old, almost 21. We've not won a playoff game in, like, 30 years. The Reds haven't won a playoff series in, like, 25 years. I'm not used to my team's winning at all. And, um, you know, if you know if the Bengals win a playoff game, I'm going to be going crazy, but I don't want to be yeah. cra- going crazy just as that, just over – one, I mean, game, not even winning. But see, these series. the Bengals winning is winning a playoff game. This is a series. Like this is a basketball series. You won one game out of a series. You got a couple more to go. So don't get too excited. But this is why the Knicks aren't allowed in the playoffs. You know, every decade, like once every decade, they can come back. They can go into playoffs because of the stuff they've been chanting. They've been that crowd has been has been. Uh, uh, interesting to say the least uh, for this playoff series. So New York Knicks, I mean, I understand, like you said, I- I'm a Raider fan too. So I- I'm not used to cheering on a lot of teams uh, or a lot of playoff atmosphere teams and-, and seeing what's going on. But the New York Knicks have been waiting for this for a long time. And <laughs> they're t- I don't know, maybe, maybe being locked up with COVID and all that has changed the atmosphere too. Cause of the fans and people are just ready to be outside, ready to win and ready to have fun. And they're doing what they got to do. I, I saw that they're passing out papers, like little papers of tonight's chant is this, this is what we're going to chant at the New York Knicks game. It's that's crazy. And, you know, I mean, Knicks fans are really devout. You know, they're one of the biggest, I would say hardcore fans in the NBA and another team, you know, who's really, you know, shown their presence known, after the playoffs, you know, like fan support wise, it's definitely the Phoenix Suns. You know, they've not been in the playoffs forever. You know, they tried to get Chris Paul. And I mean, if anything, throughout the Suns this season, I really should I really think this shows the greatness of Chris Paul and it really shows, you know, when it's all said and done, Chris Paul, I mean, he already is one of the greatest point guards of all time. But I really think once he retires, we really, you know, realize what we, you know, saw greatness in Chris Paul. Because you know, you look at the teams I saw a stat the other day. Uh, each team, you know, he's been traded with throughout the years. You know, the record uh, percentage-wise has increased significantly. And the Phoenix Suns, I don't believe they've made the playoffs in a decade or around that. And uh, you know, they're before they traded to get CP3, they're basically the laughing stock of the NBA. They have a great guy, great scorer, and Devin Booker. And that's a really nice duo. It sucks to see Chris Paul, you know, get hurt um, in one of the playoff games. And, um, you know, the series is now tied up one-to-one with the Lakers. 
I mentioned I'm a huge Cavs fan, and when he was with the Cavs, I absolutely love him. He was my favorite player of all time, but now since LeBron's with the Lakers, it is just impossible to like him. I mean, he's all the attentions around him, and I know it was already like that, you know, when he was with Cleveland too, but I mean, I, I want to see the Celtics win. I mean, honestly, I know they're going to get swept. I just, not trying to be biased, I just really do not want to see the Lakers win the finals. I would be content with anybody winning the finals, except it was except for the Lakers. But, um, you know, that, that kind of series to me kind of surprised me a little bit because, you know, despite the Lakers, you know, winning in game two, the, the Suns, I mean, they show that I don't think this you know, series is going to be easy out for the Lakers. The Suns have, to me, been definitely one of the more surprising and really good teams so far in the playoffs. Yes. Uh, and, and I don't know if Mike is still in the comments, but Mike and I do a show called Friday Night Wars. It's, it shows every Friday night and we debate. And one of the topics was in December before the season started was who was our sleeper t- pick to go to the championship and win the championship. And I jumped on the Phoenix Suns quick. I kind of did it as a joke, but I kind of had that feeling that after last year, when the Phoenix Suns went to the bubble, right. And they, they went eight and zero in that bubble and still missed the playoffs because you know the way it was said. It they I felt that they gained the momentum. Then they got Chris Paul, and they won Game One and they won it pretty easily, right? I mean, Laker fans could say they made a bunch of mistakes, but then they came back. They were down and came back uh, in Game Two. They were brought it close with like four minutes left. They ended up losing, but I feel that the Lakers have to play 100% no mistake. I mean, and people are like, well, the, the, every team has to play that. No, you. there's some teams that are good enough that you can make a mistake and you can play 90% of how good you are. The Lakers had to go, like, play all out. And that's without Chris Paul most of the time. So I think the Lakers are in trouble. I think the Suns and I think the Lakers might end up winning the series. I doubt it. Uh, I'm still going to take the Suns. The Suns are the number two seed for a reason. They're going to continue to play hard, and uh, yeah, losing Chris Paul has been uh, is going to hurt them. But it just shows that hey, they're right there with the Lakers. So Laker fans, Laker fans are going to say like, "Oh, they're going to take care. We're going to take care of the Suns." But I know that deep down, they're scared. They're scared right now. And you mentioned the Phoenix Suns being the number two seed in the West, and I, I believe the Utah Jazz are the first seed in the West. I could be wrong, but um. You know, they played the Memphis Grizzlies. The Grizzlies are the youngest team currently in the playoffs. You know, they defeated Utah in game one. And John Morant, who, you know, I was – people were pretty much laughing at me when I said it. Uh, coming out of the draft class a couple years ago, I said John Morant was better than Zion. I, I, I know I might sound a little bit crazy, but I honestly believe he is. He reminds me kind of like athleticism-wise of Russell Westbrook and just say, you know, shooting-wise, kind of like a uh, Curry in a way. But, you know, John Morant had a sensational game last night, having 47 points. That's the most points in Grizzlies history in the playoffs, and they were still lost. Um, to <laughs> me, you know, there's a chance. I mean, I know the Lakers winning. It's not going to be surprising at all. But, you know, there is a chance the number one and number two seed could end up losing in the West. You know, the West is one of always the best um, conference when it comes to between, between the West and the East. And, you know, if number one and number two ends up losing in the West, I think that makes it really, really intriguing uh, to see how uh, to see who comes out of the West. Yeah, I I mean, to see the top teams fall. And normally in basketball, it doesn't really happen that often that you see top seeds fall out of the playoffs. So both of them fall in the first round. It's going to make some some interesting. But, you know, nothing's been the same Uh, after COVID. A lot of things have changed. And the Lakers aren't your normal number seven seed like. Injuries have taken that team down a little bit. So, the, you know, even in the Lakers should be in the top three, if not top four. So having that number seven seed is kind of like, uh, but yeah, Memphis, Memphis playing over their head there, you know, but uh, if they could pull it off, I, I think the Jazz are a little bit overrated, but that's just my opinion. I don't, like I said, I don't watch a lot of basketball. I just think they've been playing um, good, solid basketball, but I don't think they're a great, great team. So you kind of have a finals prediction in mind and uh in the final prediction, who would you probably uh, have up winning and how many games i would i would love to see the phoenix suns versus the new york knicks let me tell you that <laughs> that would be the the two teams i would love to see but i'm gonna say 
if I had a pick, it'd probably be Philly and uh, you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Dallas. Philly and Dallas, and I'll say Dallas takes it in. Uh, in, you know, six. Is that one? Is that what you're wanting to see, or is that what you think will actually happen? That that's if if I had a pick right now, that would be what I. The Dallas and Philly would be what I would I would predict. I want to see I want to see the Suns and the Knicks. It, to me, um, you know, going on what I think will happen, I think it'll probably be the Nets and the Lakers. The one thing bad though is about the Nets. You know, they have the best big three in the NBA. It's not even close. But aside from those guys, they really don't have. I mean, you know, have Blake Griffin, but he's nowhere near what he used to be. They have Joe Harris, who's a nice uh, three-point shooter, but they don't really have a consistent bench. You know, the Lakers do kind of have that. Um, You know, what I think we'll see, I think it'll be the Nets over the Lakers in six. What I would like to see, I mean, I want to see the Celtics against the Lakers and sweep them. I mean, I know that's not going to happen, but um, I'm very anxious to see, you know, how the rest of the playoffs, you know, come to be about, you know, who ends up winning, you know, round one series and everything. And you're kind of staying on the playoffs um, situation and here for a second. You know, the game, I believe it was yesterday, Russell Westbrook, you know, left the game uh, for the Wizards due to an injury. You know, they were playing against the Philadelphia 76ers. And while he was going to the tunnel to go back to the locker room, a fan actually, you know, poured uh, popcorn all over him. And um, that yeah. fan, I believe, was announced that he is suspended for all of the 76ers games. It was not announced yet if he is suspended for every single um, arena in the NBA. But what are your kind of thoughts on uh, all that situation? <laughs> Anytime a fan does anything to a player is ridiculous. I, I, I caught it this morning because, like, like you said, we don't really – I don't really watch basketball. Like, I just catch the highlights or I catch a big game every once in a while. And I saw this, and I was like, what is going on? What – People, you can't just because you buy a ticket doesn't mean that you could go and treat players any way that you want. And you can't <laughs> dumping popcorn is the same as as spitting or, or punching or doing whatever to a player. And if Russell Westbrook, he did the right thing. Like they had to hold him back. I don't know if he played it up just a little bit so he wouldn't like to make it look like he was mad. But come on, like I would have, I would have been mad too. Like if you did that to me, I'd be mad. <laughs> I'd be so mad. And people need to respect these players a little bit more. These guys are out there doing what they can to win or, or and give 100% and you treat them like this. Uh, they shouldn't have to deal with that in the arena, and it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, I also believe, you know, Trey Young uh, during the next game was spit on. I, I could be wrong, but I was kind of, you know, watching the Pat McAfee show earlier today. They were talking about that a little bit. And, you know, uh, fans, you know, throwing stuff, you know, at athletes, you know, that's something you don't really hear about often in the NBA or the NFL or even, you know, Major League Baseball. You know, we were kind of talking about before the show, we're both wrestling fans. That's something that happens a lot more often than people, you know, think. You know, it's never talked about because, you know, wrestling is not a mainstream sport like basketball. Uh, years ago, I was at a house show um, in Huntington, West Virginia, and that was when um, Seamus – you know, he was one of the bigger heels at the time, and that was the last match. I don't remember who he was fighting, but you know, somebody threw a water bottle at him. You know, during the match, and you know, they, you know, security hurry up and you know ran and escorted that guy out. You know, there's been times even on live TV. You know, remember years ago, uh, a fan was in the ring, I believe, with Cena or something like that. Um, no, uh, Seth Rollins um, on Monday Night Raw, and then just a year or so ago on AEW Dynamite. Um, you know, it was live on the air, but it was during a commercial break. Somebody threw a hot dog in the um, ring while they were uh, fighting and everything. And I really think, you know, this ha- uh, fans being ridiculous and just being stupid and being rude and really disrespectful towards athletes happen a lot more than people think. But it's not talked about because, you know, that's wrestling's not that, you know, huge of a sport. Yeah. Um, I, I hate I, this is just stupid. And it kind of goes back to really show how ignorant and stupid uh, Philadelphia fans are. I mean, they have the worst fan base. I would say up there in the NFL, definitely top three worst fan bases. They're ridiculous. I mean, they freaking threw uh, snowballs at Santa Claus years ago, and now you're yeah. dumping popcorn on Westbrook. I mean, I I hate 
win fans. That's ridiculous. But, you know, I kind of was thinking, you know, I read something. I, I know it kind of sounds crazy, but w- would you have been for or against Westbrook, like, beating up that fan? I'm never <sighs> – I'm never going to say that I'm for it. Like I don't I don't expect Westbrook to go and beat him up. I understand if if Westbrook would have like retaliated against them, but I'm not going to say that I'm going to I'm for Westbrook going and beating like taking him down and beating him up, but making sure that he got caught, making sure that he gets what he has coming and yeah, that's what I'm going to say, but I mean I, I don't want I don't want the players to go and and knock a guy out either you know like we have to play that we, there's a thin line there but yes defend yourself at all times and i, I and i tell anybody that if anybody does anything to you, defend yourself at all times but there's a, a there's a line that you have to stop at too so uh westbrook grabbing him after the popcorn or whatever if he would have done that if he would have like don't go run our test on him don't don't go crazy on him but yeah make sure he's caught and but yeah i i and you know, go back to wrestling. Wrestling, yeah, like you said, it happens a lot more at wrestling events than people think. Uh, I can go back to my childhood when I was at a house show, just like you said, and I saw The Rock get thrown into the the gate, right, the ramp where they walk down, and he hit somebody, and that dude threw a punch at The Rock. Well, The Rock laid him out, laid him out, where they had to bring a stretcher and everything, and uh, yeah, so. If if you do something to one of these athletes and they and they do a and they come back at you, expect them to come back at you. Expect these athletes because they're bigger, they're stronger, they're faster. They're gonna hurt you. They're gonna hurt you. So don't do stupid things. If you're in the fan just because you have a ticket, like I said, don't do stupid things. Don't do stupid things to these athletes because when they get their hands on you, they rightfully so they have a right to defend themselves. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm not really for Westbrook, you know, beating up that fan, but I, I have no issues with him getting, you know, ticked off. And, and you know, if he went in that guy's face and yelled at them, I had no issues with that and everything. But, uh, you know, Christopher Owen says, you know, Nick fan was permanently banned from the Garden. Yeah, I uh, saw that, and there's a chance he might be ended up being suspended um, through every single NBA arena. Uh, plugged in with Jay, just described uh, things. So I really, really appreciate it. You know, this is something, you know, kind of happened years ago. Um, I believe in 2013, um, you know, Marcus Smart was on with, with the Oklahoma State, you know, in college. You know, he didn't, you know, I, I don't believe he punched a fan. But, you know, that was, to me, that's kind of the closest situation that we've kind of had from our test in quite some time. Because you actually kind of thought, you know, Marcus Smart had a chance, uh, you know, to really play that guy out. And, you know, he didn't throw nothing at him or anything. Um, I, I honestly remember what all that was about but you know that was kind of the closest situation we've had since then and it's going to be really interesting to see you know how the nba kind of you know suspends that guy in the future uh you know like i said you know he's already suspended from the garden more than likely you know shams was talking about on the pat mcafee show he's probably going to be suspended from M- every single nba arena uh, just simple one stupid mistake i mean kind of prevents you from ever going to an nba basketball game again People need to grow up 